Sarah, plain and tall. Chapter 7 The dandelions in the field had gone by, their heads soft as feathers. The summer roses were opening. Our neighbors, Matthew and Maggie, came to help Papa plow up a new field for corn. Sarah stood with us on the porch, watching their wagon wind up the road, two horses pulling it and one tied in back. I remembered the last time we had stood here alone, Caleb and I, waiting for Sarah. Sarah's hair was in thick braids that circled her head, wild daisies tucked here and there. Papa had picked them for her. Old Bess and Jack ran along the inside of the fence, wickering at the new horses. Papa needs five horses for the big gang plow, Caleb told Sarah. Prairie grass is hard. Matthew and Maggie came with their two children and a sack full of chickens. Maggie emptied the sack into the yard and three red banty chickens clucked and scattered. They are for you, she told Sarah, for eating. Sarah loved the chickens. She clucked back to them and fed them grain. They followed her, shuffling and scratching primly in the dirt. I knew they would not be for eating. The children were young and named Rose and Violet after flowers. They hooted and laughed and chased the chickens, who flew up to the porch roof. Then the dogs, who crept quietly under the porch. Seal had long ago fled to the barn to sleep in cool hay. Sarah and Maggie helped hitch the horses to the plow. Then they set up a big table in the shade of the barn, covering it with a quilt and a kettle of flowers in the middle. They sat on the porch while Caleb and Matthew and Papa began their morning of plowing. I mixed biscuit dough just inside the door, watching. You are lonely, yes? asked Maggie in her soft voice. Sarah's eyes filled with tears. Slowly I stirred the dough. Maggie reached over and took Sarah's hand. I miss the hills of Tennessee sometimes, she said. Do not miss the hills, Maggie, I thought. I miss the sea, said Sarah. Do not miss the hills. Do not miss the sea. I stirred and stirred the dough. I miss my brother William, said Sarah. But he is married. The house is hers now, not mine any longer. There are three old aunts who all squawk together like crows at dawn. I miss them too. There are always things to miss, said Maggie, no matter where you are. I looked out and saw Papa and Matthew and Caleb working. Rose and Violet ran in the fields. I felt something brush my legs and looked down at Nick, wagging his tail. I would miss you, Nick, I whispered. I would. I knelt down and scratched his ears. I miss Mama. I nearly forgot, said Maggie on the porch. I have something more for you. I carried the bowl outside and watched Maggie lift a low wooden box out of the wagon. Plants, she said to Sarah. For your garden. My garden? Sarah bent down to touch the plants. Zinnias and marigolds and wild feverfew, said Maggie. You must have a garden, wherever you are. Sarah smiled. I had a garden in Maine with dahlias and columbine and nasturtiums, the color of the sun when it sets. I don't know if nasturtiums would grow here. Try, said Maggie. You must have a garden. We planted the flowers by the porch, turning over the soil and patting it around them and watering. Lottie and Nick came to sniff, and the chickens walked in the dirt, leaving prints. In the fields, the horses pulled the plow up and down under the hot summer sun. Maggie wiped her face, leaving a streak of dirt. Soon you can drive your wagon over to my house, and I will give you more. I have tansy. Sarah frowned. I have never driven a wagon. I can teach you, said Maggie, and so can Anna and Caleb and Jacob. Sarah turned to me. Can you? She asked. Can you drive a wagon? I nodded. And Caleb? Yes. In Maine, said Sarah, I would walk to town. Here it is different, said Maggie. Here you will drive. Way off in the sky, clouds gathered. Matthew and Papa and Caleb came in from the fields, their work done. They all ate in the shade. We are glad you are here, said Matthew to Sarah. 
a new friend. Maggie misses her friends sometimes. Sarah nodded. There is always something to miss, no matter where you are, she said, smiling at Maggie. Rose and Violet fell asleep in the grass, their bellies full of meat and greens and biscuits. And when it was time to go, Papa and Matthew lifted them into the wagon to sleep on blankets. Sarah walked slowly behind the wagon for a long time, waving, watching it disappear. Caleb and I ran to bring her back, the chickens running wildly behind us. What shall we name them? asked Sarah, laughing as the chickens followed us into the house. I smiled. I was right. The chickens would not be for eating. And then Papa came, just before the rain, bringing Sarah the first roses of summer. Chapter 8 The rain came and passed, but strange clouds hung in the northwest, low and black and green, and the air grew still. In the morning, Sarah dressed in a pair of overalls and went to the barn to have an argument with Papa. She took apples for Old Bess and Jack. Women don't wear overalls, said Caleb, running along behind her like one of Sarah's chickens. This woman does, said Sarah crisply. Papa stood by the fence. I want to learn how to ride a horse, Sarah told him. And then I want to learn how to drive the wagon by myself. Jack leaned over and nipped at Sarah's overalls. She fed him an apple. Caleb and I stood behind Sarah. I can ride a horse, I know, said Sarah. I rode one once when I was 12. I will ride Jack. Jack was Sarah's favorite. Papa shook his head. Not Jack, he said. Jack is sly. I am sly too, said Sarah stubbornly. Papa smiled. Aya, uh, he said nodding, but not Jack. Yes, Jack, Sarah's voice was very loud. I can teach you how to drive a wagon. I have already taught you how to plow. And then I can go to town by myself. Say no, Papa, Kayla whispered beside me. That's a fair thing, Sarah, said Papa. We'll practice. A soft rumble of thunder sounded. Papa looked up at the clouds. Today? Can we begin today? asked Sarah. Tomorrow is best, said Papa, looking worried. I have to fix the house roof. A portion of it is loose, and there's a storm coming. We, said Sarah. What? Papa turned. We will fix the roof, said Sarah. I've done it before. I know about roofs. I am a good carpenter. Remember? I told you. There was thunder again, and Papa went to get the ladder. Are you fast? He asked Sarah. I am fast, and I am good, said Sarah. And they climbed the ladder to the roof. Sarah, with wisps of hair around her face, her mouth full of nails, overalls like Papa's. Overalls that were Papa's. Caleb and I went inside to close the windows. We could hear the steady sound of hammers pounding the roof overhead. Why does she want to go to town by herself? asked Caleb. To leave us? I shook my head, weary with Caleb's questions. Tears gathered at the corners of my eyes, but there was no time to cry. For suddenly, Papa called out, Caleb! Anna! We ran outside and saw a huge cloud, horribly black, moving toward us over the north fields. Papa slid down the roof, helping Sarah after him. A squall, he yelled to us. He held up his arms, and Sarah jumped off the porch roof. Get the horses inside, he ordered Caleb. Get the sheep, Anna, and the cows. The barn is safest. The grasses flattened. There was a hiss of wind, a sudden pungent smell. Our faces looked yellow in the strange light. Caleb and I jumped over the fence and found the animals huddled by the barn. I counted the sheep to make sure they were all there and herded them into a large stall. A few raindrops came, gentle at first, then stronger and louder so that Caleb and I covered our ears and stared at each other without speaking. Caleb looked frightened and I tried to smile at him. Sarah carried a sack into the barn, her hair wet and streaming down her neck. Papa came behind, Lottie and Nick with him, their ears flat against their heads. Wait, cried Sarah, my chickens. No, Sarah, Papa called after her, but Sarah had already run from the barn into a sheet of rain. My father followed her. The sheep nosed open their stall door and milled around the barn, bleeding. 
Nick crept under my arm, and a lamb Maddie with a black face stood close to me, trembling. There was a soft paw on my lap, then a gray body. Seal. And then, as the thunder pounded and the wind rose, and there was the terrible crackling of lightning close by, Sarah and Papa stood in the barn doorway, wet to the skin. Papa carried Sarah's chickens. Sarah came with an armful of summer roses. Sarah's chickens were not afraid, and they settled like small red bundles in the hay. Papa closed the door at last, shutting out some of the sounds of the storm. The barn was eerie and half-lighted, like dusk without a lantern. Papa spread blankets around our shoulders, and Sarah unpacked a bag of cheese and bread and jam. At the very bottom of the bag were Sarah's shells. Caleb got up and went over to the small barn window. What color is the sea when it storms? He asked Sarah. Blue, said Sarah, brushing her wet hair back with her fingers, and gray and green. Caleb nodded and smiled. Look, he said to her, look what is missing from your drawing. Sarah went to stand between Caleb and Papa by the window. She looked a long time without speaking. Finally, she touched Papa's shoulder. We have squalls in Maine, too, she said. Just like this. It will be all right, Jacob. Papa said nothing, but he put his arm around her and leaned over to rest his chin in her hair. I closed my eyes, suddenly remembering Mama and Papa standing that way. Mama smaller than Sarah, her hair fair against Papa's shoulder. When I opened my eyes again, it was Sarah standing there. Caleb looked at me and smiled and smiled until he could smile no more. We slept in the hay all night, waking when the wind was wild, sleeping again when it was quiet, and at dawn there was the sudden sound of hail, like stones tossed against the barn. We stared out the window, watching the ice marbles bounce on the ground, and when it was over, we opened the barn door and walked out into the early morning light. The hail crunched and melted beneath our feet. It was white and gleaming for as far as we looked, like sun on glass, like the sea. Chapter 9 It was very quiet. The dogs leaned down to eat the hailstones. Seal stepped around them and leaped up on the fence to groom herself. A tree had blown over near the cow pond, and the wild roses were scattered on the ground, as if a wedding had come and gone there. I'm glad I saved an armful, was all that Sarah said. Only one field was badly damaged, and Sarah and Papa hitched up the horses and plowed and replanted during the next two days. The roof had held. I told you I know about roofs, Sarah told Papa, making him smile. Papa kept his promise to Sarah. When the work was done, he took her out into the fields, Papa riding Jack, who was sly, and Sarah riding Old Bess. Sarah was quick to learn. Too quick. Caleb complained to me as we watched from the fence. He thought a moment. Maybe she'll fall off and have to stay here. Why? He asked, turning to me. Why does she have to go away alone? Hush up, Caleb, I said crossly. Hush up. I could get sick and make her stay here, said Caleb. No. We could tie her up. No. And Caleb began to cry and I took him inside the barn where we could both cry. Papa and Sarah came to hitch the horses to the wagon so Sarah could practice driving. Papa didn't see Caleb's tears, and he sent him with an ax to begin chopping up the tree by the pond for firewood. I stood and watched Sarah, the reins in her hands, Papa next to her in the wagon. I could see Caleb standing by the pond, one hand shading his eyes, watching, too. I went into the safe darkness of the barn then, Sarah's chickens scuttling along behind me. Why? I asked out loud, echoing Caleb's question. The chickens watched me, their eyes small and bright. The next morning, Sarah got up early and put on her blue dress. She took apples to the barn. She loaded a bundle of hay on the wagon for old Bess and Jack. She put on her yellow bonnet. Remember Jack, said Papa, a strong hand. Yes, Jacob. Best to be home before dark, said Papa. Driving a wagon is hard if there's no full moon. Yes, Jacob. Sarah kissed us all, even my father, who looked surprised. Take care of Seal, she said to Caleb and me, and with a whisper to old Bess and a stern word to Jack, 
Sarah climbed up in the wagon and drove away. Very good, murmured Papa as he watched, and after a while he turned and went out into the fields. Caleb and I watched Sarah from the porch. Caleb took my hand, and the dogs lay down beside us. It was sunny, and I remembered another time when a wagon had taken Mama away. It had been a day just like this day, and Mama had never come back. Seal jumped up on the porch, her feet making a small thump. Caleb leaned down and picked her up and walked inside. I took the broom and slowly swept the porch. Then I watered Sarah's plants. Caleb cleaned out the wood stove and carried the ashes to the barn, spilling them so that I had to sweep the porch again. I am loud and pesky, Caleb cried suddenly. She said so, and she has gone to buy a train ticket to go away. No, Caleb. She would tell us. The house is too small, said Caleb. That's what it is. The house is not too small, I said. I looked at Sarah's drawing of the fields pinned up on the wall next to the window. What is missing? I asked Caleb. You said you knew what was missing. Collars, said Caleb wearily. The colors of the sea. Outside, clouds moved into the sky and went away again. We took lunch to Papa, cheese and bread and lemonade. Caleb nudged me. Ask him. Ask Papa. What has Sarah gone to do? I asked. I don't know, said Papa. He squinted at me. Then he sighed and put one hand on Caleb's head, one on mine. Sarah is Sarah. She does things her way, you know. I know, said Caleb very softly. Papa picked up his shovel and put on his hat. Ask if she's coming back, whispered Caleb. Of course she's coming back, I said. Seal is here. But I would not ask the question. I was afraid to hear the answer. We fed the sheep and I set the table for dinner. Four plates. The sun dropped low over the west fields. Lottie and Nick stood at the door wagging their tails asking for supper. Papa came to light the stove and then it was dusk. Soon it would be dark. Caleb sat on the porch steps, turning his moon snail shell over and over in his hand. Seal brushed back and forth against him. Suddenly, Lottie began to bark, and Nick jumped off the porch and ran down the road. Dust! cried Caleb. He climbed the porch and stood on the roof. Dust! And a yellow bonnet! Slowly, the wagon came around the windmill and the barn and the windbreak and into the yard, the dogs jumping happily beside it. Hush, dogs, said Sarah, and Nick leaped up onto the wagon to sit by Sarah. Papa took the reins and Sarah climbed down from the wagon. Caleb burst into tears. Seal was very worried, he cried. Sarah put her arms around him and he wailed into her dress. And the house is too small, we thought, and I am loud and pesky. Sarah looked at Papa and me over Caleb's head. We thought you might be thinking of leaving us, I told her because you missed the sea. Sarah smiled. No, she said, I will always miss my old home, but the truth of it is, I would miss you more. Papa smiled at Sarah, then he bent quickly to unhitch the horses from the wagon. He led them to the barn for water. Sarah handed me a package. For Anna, she said, and Caleb, for all of us. The package was small, wrapped in brown paper with a rubber band around it. Very carefully, I unwrapped it, Caleb peering closely. Inside were three colored pencils. Blue, said Caleb slowly, and gray and green. Sarah nodded. Suddenly, Caleb grinned. Papa, he called. Papa, come quickly. Sarah has brought the sea. We eat our night meal by candlelight, the four of us. Sarah has brought candles from town and nasturtium seeds for her garden and a book of songs to teach us. It is late and Caleb is nearly sleeping by his plate and Sarah is smiling at my father. Soon there will be a wedding. Papa says that when the preacher asks if he will have Sarah for his wife, he will answer, oh yeah. Autumn will come, then winter, cold with a wind that blows like the wind off the sea in Maine. There will be nests of curls to look for and dried flowers all winter long. When there are storms, 
Papa will stretch a rope from the door to the barn so we will not be lost when we feed the sheep and the cows and Jack and old Bess. And Sarah's chickens, if they aren't living in the house, they will be Sarah's sea, blue and gray and green, hanging on the wall. And songs, old ones and new, and seal with yellow eyes. And there will be Sarah, plain and tall.